are you bored? There are two trillion galaxies in the world, and we're on one of them, and you're bored. I bet if you took the time out of your day to figure out how many zeros were in a trillion, you wouldn't be bored. Let me explain boredom to you. Boredom is this concept that I think is established based on how we're raised or our upbringings, maybe it be in a school or an education system, and it's because from the moment we're born, everything is decided for us up until a certain point. So you go to class at this time, you do this assignment to get this reward or this GPA or this letter grade, my heat just kicked on, I'm gonna keep it moving. Everything is already decided for you. This is uh, through grade school, through college, this is through your job. You go clock in somewhere and someone tells you what to do. And so when you have actual free time, you have no idea what to do with it because no one is telling you what to do. I have lost count the amount of times somebody has messaged me because, oh no, it's raining outside. I don't know what to watch on Netflix. There's too many options. Do you want to go do something? What are you up to? Tell me about it. And it is remarkable to me because I can't think of one time in my life I lied. I can think of a few times in my life, but they were all when I was 13 years old. I was in a sports, girls in video games, and if I wasn't doing one of those three things, then my life had no meaning or sense of purpose, and I might as well have not existed. But since I developed a brain and motivation and drive and realized how vast and cool this world is, I was never bored again. But still, to this day, there are people that are bored. And all the time you see people like, I don't know, it's amazing to me. I spent an hour the other day sitting on my floor, taking my vacuum apart, figuring out how to put it back together because there was some sort of jam, it was making a noise, it wasn't working properly, so I took it apart, I figured it out. It took me an hour, hour and a half, I don't mean to brag, but I figured it out, I put it back together, now it works properly. Granted, I put it back together with a screw inside of it, so it still makes a rattling noise, actually a louder rattling noise, but it works now, and that's all that matters. But because I did that, it gave me this positive reinforcement, this encouragement to move on to another task. I made a meal from scratch with the ingredients I had, because I was running out of ingredients, because we're all in quarantine right now. and. Not a lot of options, haven't gone grocery shopping. So I put together a meal and it turned out pretty good. I had two victories now. Instead of being bored and complaining or looking for some sort of satisfaction or fulfillment elsewhere in my life through another person, I figured out how to find it within myself. And those two wins translated to me finishing one of my favorite songs to date. Now, how are you ever bored? I'm gonna say that so many times in this video, I swear. Also, why is the heat still going? It's hot in here. Now, excuse me. I had to take a break because my camera can only shoot five minutes of 4K. And once I saw the 4K quality, I can't be doing that 2K nonsense. Anyways, guess who's down here? Kiki? Oh, you're so, oh, you're so happy to be held. Did you see the video? You are in it. You're in a music video. You wanna see it? I'm gonna play it. Look, I even got it ready for you. Look, it's you. Here, get out of the way for the camera so they can see too. Look at you, look, look. Oh, come on, you fucking killed it, dude. Anyways, we're gonna leave her up as the backdrop. As you can see, she is thrilled with her performance. What I was getting at with this idea of positive reinforcement, I have a theory as to why people are bored. And it's because we have these comfort zones. And the bigger your comfort zone is, or the more you push yourself to the edge of said comfort zone, the less bored you are. And let me explain why. You know, if you get on some sort of regular workout routine or diet, or you establish this new habit, this new thing, and it's consistent, the longer you commit to it and do it, the easier it gets. But if you take a break, some sort of hiatus, you go on vacation, you get off your regular routine, it gets harder to get back into it. And it's because you kept pushing this comfort zone. It's like this, this bubble. Imagine this bubble. You have this bubble and it gets bigger, right? As you try things and do things and experiment and learn and educate yourself and live your life. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now you establish these, these positive reinforcement habits. You're doing something, you're exercising your brain or you're exercising yourself physically or mentally and it keeps getting bigger and bigger, but you stop doing these things and your comfort zone goes from this you know, and it starts to go down a little bit each time. I know the day goes by, it goes down like this. All of a sudden, you realize that you just went on tour and you put on 20 pounds and you don't know how to make any songs because you're not motivated, because you're sad and nothing is working out. 
you know, maybe that doesn't apply to every single person, but I know some people that it does, not speaking from experience. But that comfort zone gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And all of a sudden, anything that's outside of this little bubble, this little thing, feels impossible. And it, and it feels ridiculous. So all of a sudden, you find yourself bored because you don't want to challenge yourself. Why would you want to do that? Yes! Woo! Camera died again. Five minute increments. That's all we got. I've decided after this, I'm done with 4K. To the 2K we go. Anyways, what I was getting at is that we have this natural tendency to reject change. Anything out of the ordinary. But if we start in small increments and stimulate our brains, Here's another good example. Maybe you start cleaning the counter and the next thing you know you're magic erasing the bathtub. That's how we function, that's how we work. I know that everyone can relate to that in some way or another. Start a small task and it translates to other things. It has like this ripple or snowball effect, right? And I've learned to apply this in my everyday life. Especially with things like the internet or YouTube, you can fall down a rabbit hole of information. You just, all of a sudden you realize, Honestly, I don't even know why I'm doing this. I should be running for president or I should be figuring out what exactly happened to the Mayans because I have some theories or I think I figured out where Atlantis is. I have an idea of where Atlantis is. I've seen three hours of YouTube videos. I know exactly where it's located. It's located in the Sahara Desert. Now, I firmly believe that because of things like social media, it establishes this unrealistic expectation of reality that a person's highlight reel, which is exactly what it is, is what the actual standard of living is. Say for instance, you've ever been going through your phone, reflecting, because you're bored, looking through previous moments in your life, times when you weren't bored and you were enthusiastic and excited about something. It could have been a vacation you took, a memory that you had with this person, it doesn't matter, but you scroll through, you see a picture, it reminds you of this moment, and then you, you post it on Instagram to reinvigorate some of those feelings of happiness and excitement, you wanna share it to get you some sort of quick fix, to get some sort of acknowledgement, some likes online, right? And every single one of us like, oh my God, summer 2017, take me back. You know, every single person has done this. And that is exactly my point. Social media, the internet, is a compilation of our best and worst moments, but not our regular moments, because that would be boring. But what people need to realize is that it's not boring because those regular moments, that regular stuff becomes dope stuff. That is the reason anything gets done. Seeing people complain on the internet and be bored and it's just insane to me. How could you ever be bored when there is something like this? Look at it. Now, oh my camera's gonna die again. Look. Nothing happens overnight and nothing will ever happen overnight if you spend most of those nights being bored. So, my advice to you would be to quit fantasizing about things that haven't happened and start to treat each day as if it were part of an episode or a page out of the big picture and quit punishing yourself for not experiencing the finale every day. Because literally everything that you read or see someone else experiencing is just an accumulation of a person's monotonous and grueling day-to-day -day hard work. And start to enjoy the regular stuff. Because someday in the extremely distant future, you'll be reflecting on the good old days and by then we'll have lost the opportunity to do anything about it. Thank you and thanks for tuning into my weekly TED Talk. Now please have the most wonderful week ever and try not to be bored. Okay, cut. Oh, 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 it's me. <laughs>